All right, we want to talk a little bit more about gene therapy. And for that, I'm joined in the studio by Dr. Wolf-Dieter Ludwig. He is the head of the hematology and oncology department at the Helios Clinic here in Berlin. Dr. Ludwig, thanks for being with us today. Good morning. All right, can you explain for us in simple terms how this procedure works? Gene therapy is still an experimental strategy. You use a virus to transport a gene into the cell and the cell will integrate into the DNA, the genomic information of the cell, and will be responsible for the production of a protein that is missing in the cell or does not work in the right way into the cell. All right, where does the genetic material come from? The genetic material is based on the genomic sequence of the respective gene and it is synthesized in the laboratory and associated with different kinds of viruses. Um, which illnesses can best be treated with gene therapy? At the moment we have most experience in the field of disorders of the immune system, a very severe disorder called severe combined immunodeficiency where the immune system does not work in the right way. The children who suffer from this disorder die at the age of five, six years. And therefore, at that time, we have only the stem cell transplantation or this new strategy, this gene therapy, to replace the missing gene inside the cells of the immune system. Okay, well, I've read that sometimes the disadvantages of gene therapy may outweigh the advantages. What are some of the risks and difficulties? Because we use viruses to transport the gene into the cells, these viruses can induce disorders of the immune system. They can also induce cancer because they are integrated into the genome near the so-called oncogenes, which are responsible for, for example, leukemia or other cancer disorders. And therefore, both the vectors and the now host immune response is very crucial in this question. And during the last 20 years, both the vectors and the response of the immune system has been improved much. Okay, and um, but why is gene therapy so limited? Why does it have such limited approval here in Europe? First of all, because we have not the scientific evidence how this gene therapy works. Now, 20 years after the beginning of the gene therapy, we have much more information, mainly from molecular biology, basic science, but also regarding the construction of vectors. And therefore, at the moment, we are still at the beginning, but now it's much more promising that in the near future, we can use this gen gene therapy to treat patients with monogenetic disorders. Okay, and um, when a patient does undergo gene therapy, how long is it until a doctor can determine if it's effective, if it's working? If it is effective, the doctor can judge after some weeks. But on the other hand, as I told before, the risk can only be judged after one, two, three years, because if the patient will get cancer, you will not get cancer immediately after the gene therapy, but after quite a couple of years. And therefore, we need clinical studies that follow the patients for a long time. The best will be five or 10 years after the um, application of the gene therapy. Okay. All right. Well, Dr. Ludwig, it's been a very interesting discussion. We thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay.